Well, hello, lovely humans, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, Jamie Wolfer, I'm a wedding planner. My company is JW Coordination. If you want to give us a follow over on Instagram, and I do wedding planning tips, tricks, videos every single week that hopefully make your wedding planning just a little bit easier. And in this week's video, we are going to be talking about unplugged ceremonies. What are they, and should you do one? The pros and cons of an unplugged ceremony. So without further ado, let's just jump right on into it. So first, let's discuss what an unplugged ceremony is. And I've kind of touched on this in videos before, but we've never delved into the topic like specifically. An unplugged ceremony is where you ask your guests to refrain from taking pictures with any sort of device, whether it be their cell phones, their own DSLRs, or uh, heaven forbid, their iPads. And you can communicate that in a myriad of different ways. And we'll get to that in just a little bit. But basically the concept is, please put your phones away. Like don't have them out. And I'm finding that a lot of couples are jumping on board with this trend because there are ton of good merits to having an unplugged ceremony. So, you know, with that in mind, here are the pros for an unplugged ceremony. First of all, better photos for you and for your photographer. If a photographer goes to get a shot of you walking down the aisle for the very first time and someone sticks their phone out in the way, like that photo is kind of ruined. It's now no longer gonna be the photo that you print up and put on a wall or print up and put in a scrapbook. It's just gonna be one of those photos that you're like, it exists. There's me walking down the aisle, but there's a phone in the picture. I think one of my biggest bones to pick with guests taking photos during a ceremony is they're not gonna be the ones to print this up and put it on their wall. They're not. They're most likely just gonna take it, share it on social media, you know, and they are excited. We're not gonna remove that excitement from them, but they're not going to put it on their wall or in a scrapbook the same way that you would because it's your wedding. So if you choose to do an unplugged ceremony, you just end up getting way better photos and you're the person that they matter the most to. The second pro of having an unplugged ceremony is it gives guests the opportunity to just appreciate the moment a whole lot more. Well, we don't intend to be patronizing about it and it's not like we're like, don't use your phones, be a good listener. You go through a lot of time and effort to create this beautiful ceremony with your efficient and with your spouse to be and there are different elements that you really want to share with your guests it's and it's difficult to be present when you're posting a picture to Instagram instead of listening to what the efficient saying or, or listening to your personal vows that you hand wrote yourself and you just you're pouring out all your love and someone's face is stuck in their phone because like Kevin said in our photography video like uh she talked about how people will just take the photo and then immediately go to post it to social media that may not always be the case but like that kind of sucks. The third pro of having an unplugged ceremony is like technically not the ceremony portion, but I can't tell you the amount of times that during family photos, someone else will grab their phone or their camera. Family photos are hard enough as is. It's just, it's just hard to move a lot of bodies and get them to all pay attention and look in the same direction simply because they're so excited to see each other and they're really excited to chat and they want to catch up and your, your photographer is trying really hard to wrangle these people into photos to get these done so you guys can get onto the party. But we know that these photos are important to you. So when Aunt Susie with her DSLR jumps behind the photographer and goes over here guys over here like that's really difficult and adds extra distraction and when the photographer goes to take the shot and people don't know where they're supposed to be looking so they end up getting half of your family looking at you and the other half looking at Aunt Susie's DSLR it doesn't make for a great photo and it really does cause a lot of chaos so removing that option is really helpful <laughs> I actually had a photographer once lean over to me and say this woman right here in the floral dress has got to go she's got to go. I can't, I can't keep photographing with her right here. And I had to go up to her and say, Hey, I'm so sorry. If there's any way that we could have you, uh, take a few steps back. The photographer is really trying to capture these photos right now, but don't worry. I'm sure the bride and groom will share them with you afterwards. Did the lady listen? Kind of. I mean, she took a few steps back, but kept taking photos, but there's only so much we could do at that point. So having it be unplugged during this portion too, or encouraging guests to not use their cameras during this time can really make things so much easier. And again, gets you better photos in the end. But like I said in the beginning of the video, there are a few cons that can possibly might 
slightly happen if you decide to do an unplugged ceremony. I know a bunch of my clients love looking at their photos either the night of or the next day, especially if they're using a hashtag and they go to the hashtag and they go to look it up and they want to see photos. They would love to see these moments and reflect back on them. And so um, when you have an unplugged ceremony or an unplugged portion of your event, that means that guests will not be taking photos during that time and therefore will not be sharing them. And so the couple may have a little bit less to look at immediately following their event. The second con is missed moments. Now, um, if we're talking ceremony specific, your photographers are capturing everything. But if we have a hundred cameras in the crowd, that's a lot of pictures that they could be capturing. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and take a step back and say like, it could ruin your photographer's photos. So uh, it's not necessary. <laughs> Clearly I'm in camp unplugged and not camp plugged, but um, some people get concerned that they'll miss out on moments. So what I encourage you to do is make sure you have a very clear conversation with your photographer of the moments that you really want captured. Then at a certain point, you just have to trust their experience and artistic eye to be able to capture those things for you. But some people are worried they're gonna miss out on some moments. The last con to unplugged ceremony is hurt feelings. I mean, sometimes couples just feel really bad telling guests to put their phones away and they don't wanna control their experience. And some people may get mad if they're told to put their phones away and then you have to deal with emotions fallout and nobody wants that but we need to come back to that very first point who's printing these photos out? and if they're gonna print them up are they gonna print up your photographer's version or their cell phone version so you kind of have to weigh within your own heart what is more important you know is it worth ruffling some feathers to make sure that you get amazing photography that you're gonna want to look back on for years to come or do you just want to make sure everything is nice and smooth and clean and hunky-dory with all of your friends and relatives and potentially sacrifice the quality of your photos so now that we've gone through the pros and cons and obviously like I'm I'm personally much more heavily leaning towards the pros um, let's Let's talk about how you actually implement an unplugged ceremony. And I think there are four different ways that you can do this. First of all, it's a great idea to put it on your wedding website. That way guests, if they decide to go in, poke around, they will see early ahead of time, you're kind of starting the gentle warning of like, hey, FYI, like it's gonna be unplugged. So don't bring your nice camera to the ceremony because can't go up there. The second thing that you can do and the most common thing that I see is having a sign posted somewhere. Now, a little bit of a pro insider tip here. If you are doing a sign, make sure it's very legible and make sure it's at reading level. So if it's small and it's on the ground, guests most likely are not gonna pay attention to it. If it's large, but it's clear and the writing is white, it's gonna be a little bit harder to see. I mean, you know your girl loves an acrylic sign or a glass sign, I even made one of those, I'm gonna link it up here. But if they can't read it, they're not gonna follow the instructions. So make sure that that point is pretty clear on that sign, unplugged ceremony. We only wanna see your faces, not your devices, some sort of like cute little catchy phrase there, but they gotta be able to read it to follow it. The third place that you could share this is on a ceremony program. So if you decide to do programs, which you totally don't have to, they are an added cost and uh, they more often than not end up in the trash. But if you are doing one and you do want an unplugged ceremony, guests will pick up that program and read over it and look at it. So if you have really clear instructions on there to say, please keep your phones away or like we'd love for you to be present, blah, 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 blah. Again, insert cutesy little phrase here. Then that is a great place for you to put that. And then the fourth way that you can communicate this to your crowd is by having the efficient walk out before the ceremony begins. So before anyone else walks down the aisle and says, ladies and gentlemen, we just want to make a quick announcement. We'd love for this to be an unplugged ceremony. So please keep your devices in your purses and in your pockets. If not the efficient, then perhaps the DJ can make that announcement instead. But just making it really clear, hey, we're about to get started. Okay, ready? Go time. So uh, don't pull your phone out. Or Aunt Susie, put your Nikon away. It's not your turn. It's not your turn. And I recommend picking two of these areas at least, um, or you can do all four of them, but just to really kind of politely but consistently communicate this message of, we don't want pictures being taken during our ceremony. And then a last little fun bit for you, if you feel so inclined, because so many people do want to capture a moment during your ceremony and perhaps you're feeling the pressure of like, uh, people having hurt feelings or you know you want some photos to look back on the next day give them an opportunity to take photos have the efficient say all right ladies and gentlemen as you know this is an unplugged ceremony but you will have a photo opportunity coming up in just a little bit so be ready for that okay and then it's just a polite way of being like it's okay just don't take photos for now I promise we'll give you a chance to later and then at the very end of your ceremony you guys kiss you have the moment ah, it's like so great and then the efficient says okay everybody grab your cell phones let's do it again and you guys kiss again and everyone's laughing and taking photos and it's really is it can be a cute way to get people their photos 
without interrupting your professional photographer and ruining the photos you're keeping for the rest of your life. You feel? That way people will have, you know, some photos from the ceremony to share and then we'll hopefully feel encouraged to take photos throughout the rest of the night and fill up that hashtag so you have so much more to look back on the next day. What about you? Are you doing Unplugged? What are your thoughts on Unplugged? Do we like it? Do we not like it? Do we care? Do we just like not care at all? This, like so many other things with wedding planning, it's a personal decision. And what feels good for one person is not gonna feel right for the next person. So uh, let's get a conversation going in the comments down below. How's that sound? If you haven't done so already, like this video because you like the video and subscribe to this channel for more tips and tricks for the modern day bride. If you're not already following us on Instagram, uh, we're on there a lot. I'd like to say every day, but like, your girl gets lazy sometimes, but if you want to see real life weddings from real life people, that's the spot. <laughs> oh, and if you guys want, I do have a second channel over here on YouTube. <laughs> Little plug. It, I'm going to link it right over here. I think that's where I have it in the end card. Go check it out. I mean, maybe when you're done planning your wedding and you just want to keep watching content, like, there you go. Happy birthday. There it is. And until next week, bye guys.